by the sports doctor, Colin McLaughlin, joined in studio by New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. John, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, deadline uh, in mid-July for the next book. So. Literally mid-July, July 15th. Here we are in the penultimate day of May. Yes. How are you yes. doing? How many pages you got left to go? Uh, I, probably, I probably got about 25,000 words left, Whatever, however many pages that is. All right. Mr. Harvey, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. We very much appreciate it. I You're didn't welcome. get that. Why is he more important than me? Why does he get a big appreciation? And because he like, can arrest me and you can't. He can't arrest. Do you You're arrest power? He has yes. arresting authority. Oh, okay. We sure do have, we have a, a teeny uh, tiny bit Oh, you have to be in the, like, the courthouse, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Something very small. Technical. I don't want I don't want to arrest people. Like I, I let the professional, I let I sure. the professionals to do that. Not that your have lane. the training on that. Not your lane. Right, Same exactly. Either. I just get, the, get them afterwards. In studio with us as we continue our march through the city of Martinsburg elections in a, a program note, all candidates who are running in contested seats have been invited to appear on the program. If you are uncontested, we did not invite you because I mean, no, yeah, 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 no choice. <laughs> yeah, that's you vote for. You vote for them or you just don't vote. Um, but even if they get one vote, they're in. So we've invited the contested uh, uh, seats to appear on the program. Um, most have accepted, some have not yet, but it's not yet election day. That could change as we move along here. Elaine Mock is yes. our next guest on the program, running in an at-large uh, capacity, four running, two to be elected. Elaine, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Thank, thanks for having me, and it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It is nice out, isn't it? Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, Elaine, I, I presume most people know you by now. But for those who have just moved to the area, and as we know, this is a growing area with new residents all the time, uh, tell us a bit about your resume, so to speak. Well, uh, the previous individual that was here was a school teacher. I did that for 31 years. Uh, I ran an assisted living facility for 15. I ran an antique shop and certified appraiser in downtown Martinsburg. And I was county uh, commissioner uh, for 10 years and county clerk for two. And when you were a teacher, you were specifically involved in trying to advance girls' sports at that time in the school. Yes, and, and the early sports, I, I'm very upset with the uh, Title IX issue because I was one of them that had girls' sports before it was even in the high school. I had uh, an individual uh, private team, and we competed with Maryland and Pennsylvania, and uh, then went on in 72. It finally got things going with Title IX, and I also was in court over the uh, issue of equal pay for, uh, for women coaches that was coaching girls' sports. So I've been through that medley, and I'm very upset with the way things are going at the moment. Mm -hmm. In regards to your time as a county commissioner, a county council person, I think part of that time was as a county council person, I yes. think is what they officially called yes. it at that time. Uh, ultimately, you elected to uh, voluntarily give up your seat to move to the county clerk's position, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Why did you make that decision, Elaine? Well, first of all, I'm a historian. And I, uh, there's a lot of things historically uh, that are involved with the courthouse. And I have been a certified appraiser, and I've worked with a lot of property. And so consequently, I was... Uh, I understood how all of those things work, whether it's transfer fees or, or, or any of those types of things and how they are to be placed. And so I uh, thought that I could be an assistant to get the courthouse organized. Uh, obviously, during your time as a clerk, a highly publicized and controversial time as clerk, uh, there was the issue with the arrest and the bolt cutters and, and then ultimately your defeat uh, for re-election. How would you uh, go back and look at that time as the county clerk, Elaine. At this point, I, that's, that issue is resolved. Uh, I'm moving forward. And as far as my job that I was at the courthouse, I totally got everything there uh, organized and in preservation and all that other stuff. And so right now, uh, Tony has an issue where he's going to be moving things and things can be moved and not be questioned. And it's in archival boxes and archival sleeves. And I got all of that done in that two years and why do you want to be a city council person now i'm a city uh, I'm, i've been a lifetime member of the city uh, as far as i live at 1000 north high street as a child i was from union avenue pennsylvania avenue 617 albert i've been in this whole north end adam stevens and i uh, want to see i'm seeing the growth of martinsburg as being an explosion in the next like you said 10 years because here's the issue you got martinsburg mills it's got 387 apartments 
and they're going to be high-end apartments. Our medium income and since 20 has gone up from 55000 to 71000 a family. So that's going to mean no more services needed for the, with the city. So like while or previously you were talking about imagination, there's lots of things going to be happening, and people have got to pay attention to it. And when it was mentioned that Martinsburg should be a destination, we should be a destination, not a location, because here's what's happening. People live here, go to the city. They don't stay here and spend their money. We need people to pay attention to what we have and spend money from the city to work with developing the historical arts and music area as a destination, a big destination area. And so with the roundhouse, a lot of things that were being discussed previously, I have a dream that when you come down Martin Street on a Wrights parking lot, if you take that parking lot, go straight over, you go to Martin Street. When you go over, you want to be a four-level parking garage that you can go into, and then you can go out on the other side to go to Center Street because Martin Street goes right through there. Mm -hmm. And then you put a four-story hotel on top. Our biggest issue right now in downtown Martinsburg is we don't have a hotel. Right. And if we're going to have conferences, we have to have places for people to stay of over 220. And the reason I was in the uh, – city i mean this county council and i was trying to get the conferences to be here i couldn't get them to be here because as a total we didn't have enough to do that uh, for rooms and so consequently that's a major issue if you want to be a destination you have to have the the facilities to handle it and this is not something that that we have at this current and there's and i said we're very fortunate i mean we've got the adam stevens house the raymer center We've got By George. We've got the Roundhouse. The Roundhouse is a national landmark two times, not just for the fact of the, the trains and the B&O and Stonewall Jackson in the 1877, but the construction. An architectural engineer would, it is a dream to go in there and look how those buildings are designed. And so, yes, we got, we got plans on the books for a where the burnout Roundhouse is to be a, a – a, theater and around out there mm -hmm. that we can do on outside an amphitheater we've got that stuff we've got lots of plans but we ha don't have the the funding and so you know, naturally we're in a process of we got lots of applications in for different federal grants and things of that nature and of course locally here we've been very blessed blessed by the uh the the foundation the eastern pain and the foundation that's helped support us and different organizations because we're doing repairs as we do repairs we're trying to get matching money so that we can match these and, grants and when you said did you mean the eastern west virginia community foundation yes that's yes okay. yeah right and so we need repairs and things of that nature and so they, we've been real supportive of that they've been real supportive for us so there's lots of things going on in this community and uh affordable housing my goodness we're out of the neighborhood we've gone from 255,020 to 285,000 now currently so prices of housing is just going crazy yeah. But on the downside, Martinsburg has a 24% poverty level. So we can't price ourselves out of the neighborhood. So the city, we got all these services, and one of the things I've, I've looked at is the 1% one, the 1 sales tax. We could put a fund aside to try to keep the seniors in their houses. So the seniors living on Social Security, if they're getting $1,500 a year to pay taxes on a house, my goodness, the taxes might be more than $1,500 a year. So we're, we're, uh, we got to look at some of these things to keep these people in their location, uh, because you're you're only as good as your cross population. And you know that we've got a lot of great seniors that's in this area that that have done a lot of things for this community, and we don't need to forget them. And uh, we have senior facilities and things of that nature. Uh, we have great uh, senior care over on uh, High Street, the senior center, and all these things, uh, but. It's stuff that we need to look at, and he was talking about sidewalks. We got major issues with sidewalks. Out here on Woodbury Avenue, you got a pool. There's no sidewalks on either side of that street from, from Woodbury Avenue back. Here's kids and stuff walking. And that street is busy. That street is busy. And in individual streets, there's a lot of individual streets that don't have sidewalks. And we're not talking about just repairing the ones in downtown. We're talking safety issues. The other major safety issue on sidewalks is out there by the hospital. 
And the problem there is one side of the street's city, the other side of the street's county. Right. How do you do that? And I and when I was in the council, we tried to work with Mark Baldwin. We would try to get a grant and all this other stuff, and we couldn't get everybody to agree on what we needed to do there. You mean the city and the county councils at the time? We, we, were, we were talking about doing some of that stuff and the complications, but I don't think it should be that complicated. Not to put a sidewalk in. No, not to put a sidewalk in. Because look at all the people that are walking that area to the medical facilities and to the school and to that uh, apartment complex there on the right. I mean, there's tons of people. I've not, I've not traveled that road and not had somebody walking on the side, stepping in the gutters, trying to stand up. Sure. So there's all kinds of issues that we need to put on the table to see, okay, these are the issues. This is the cost. How can we take it apart and make it in chunks that we can handle it to start moving forward to bring this city up? Because in 10 years, with all the stuff that's going on, it'll be unbelievable. I mean, we're right now, we went, uh, we're averaging 100 a year. 100 what? People. 100 people moving into the city per year? Uh, it's averaging like 100 people a year. Well, we get this massive complex at Martinsburg Mills, you know, 387 apartments, minimum. 387 people, but, you know, you could have, uh, what do you call it, two, two families of two or even more. So there's all kinds of things that are happening, and if we become a destination that provide the service so people don't have to run to the city to see a, a, a theater a activity or whatever, and there's got to be lots of stuff that we can do, but we have to lay it all out on the table mm -hmm. and and what do you call it, have a brainstorming session and bring in all kinds of folks. And I've been in a lot of these brainstorming sessions, and people walk in and sit down and look around and go, what's your idea? What's your we need people that have ideas. If you, want, if you don't want to brainstorm and come to the table with ideas, we don't need you at those meetings. Hang on a second here, because I know Matt and John have some questions for you. John, you go first, or Matt, if you yeah, wanted to. Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, I want to switch gears. What is the mo <laughs> what is the most historic document in Berkeley County? The clerk's office. Is there any is there any deeds or transfers of property from George Washington? Yes, the the Harpers Ferry Arsenal. And that and because Berkeley and Jefferson used to be one county, that would explain why some of the right historical. That's, it was until eighteen oh one that Jefferson. Yeah, seventeen seventy two was Berkeley, and eighteen oh one was the county, and then we have a seventeen. Um, 35, I believe, deed that's Morgan County. It, it's, it's from Morgan, Morgan, regarding a piece of property. But it's in storage right now at the library because of some action taken many years ago because they didn't have a place to lock it up. And what are what are the documents? Well, the 1735 or so, was a, a it's a Morgan, Morgan document. Oh, oh, Morgan, Morgan, the first seller of West yeah, Virginia. And, okay. Yeah, it was a deed. And then, of course, there's lots of things. I mean, I've got uh, kind of... I haven't picked that table plate up for two years now. Well, I, uh, Elaine, I don't want to go too far down okay, yeah, this sorry. road because this yeah. is a city council <laughs> oh, yeah, candidate okay. interview and, and not a historian. Sorry, I'm sorry. Idea. I'm sorry. But we can do this at another time, okay, regardless can, of, yes, of the outcome of the that. election. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't want to cheat Elaine out of her time. Not, not that cheat's the right <laughs> word, but I don't want to take away okay. time for your reelection campaign. Go ahead, John. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I am new to the area. I've only been here about two years, so I didn't know who you were. So I, I was doing some show prep last night and. Yeah, so obviously, I think you could know where I'm going with this. Clearly, you've got a lot of passion for the job, and you've got a knowledge of, of things that are going on. But ultimately, issues of character and past stuff has to be addressed. And in, in the research that I was doing, actually, in Googling you, the first things that you, uh, that you wade through, I waded through. In 1976, There was uh, you were involved with a, an issue... Uh, with missing funds as a city hall uh, clerk in 2002, you pled guilty to illegally removing asbestos in 2000 uh, in 2021. There was the burglary indictment that I, I guess that was the one that Rob was talking about with cutting locks and 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 that sort of thing. There's a fiduciary obligation and a trust thing involved with with this position. Uh, what? How do we address not to relitigate the the individual issues? And I know that there was a in, but the 1976 issue that was. I don't know what you're talking about. That's not the that's not the same one. In that was a Carol Heck. That Malk. Carol something Malk. 
that was not that me. was not you then i take all of that back i'm sorry I i'm mean, sorry i'm that sorry was okay so that, that leaves us 2002 that was you yes that the, was me the the asbestos and then the burglary thing okay so uh, the what did come of the burglary indictment it became a, a deferred uh, pro a sentencing and uh, everything's been more or less uh taken care of okay and so is that do you want to address it i mean you got a, you got a fairly big audience right now and the facebook audience has asked this question that where it's coming from so what is the how do you get past it you know it's it was what it was and now you want to run for public office again and you you want people to look past that to see the passion instead what's how do you do that how do, how do you want people to do that I have to be very careful on how to address that to not affect some folks. But here's the issue. I was finding things in the courthouse that had not been taken care of that were financial. And as the clerk, and, and Matt will know this, you're, you're addressed, at, you're supposed to be taking care of all the documents and you're responsible for all that stuff. And, and I just, and I, I went and I looked. That's all I did. I looked to see. And that was it. Nothing was taken. So right now, I've never taken anything from anybody. And I feel that the service that I have given to Berkeley County with the, uh, the courthouse having been totally run as far as taking and putting into historical preservation, uh, all those types of things, I don't think anybody else could have accomplished that with my knowledge, and I've not taken anything from anybody. Do you think there was a political motivation behind the the accusations and prosecutions? I, I don't know. Again, I'm new. I, I really, I really am flat-footed on this, so I, I don't, I don't know. I just think there's an issue, and I'm not okay. Uh, it, it's political correctness is not always the person that's involved you know that right. things get to be out of hand okay changing subjects moving on when you talk about building the the four-story hotel and the that whole market market, complex yeah. the market complex i don't know back of the napkin numbers i'm thinking 50 60 million dollars to do something like that we're closer to 30 at least nice numbers i had okay where does that come from well, a lot of times there's grants out there. A lot of times there's people that want uh, we call it uh, new market tax credits that will invest in, in a project such as this because it's on a national by landmark property. Uh, there's all kinds of options, but you've got to go out and, and if you don't dream, it'll never happen. Mm -hmm. And this is something that downtown does not have a hotel. We have the Shenandoah, which is apartments. We do not have a hotel, and if we're going to go and have the historical and, and art and music complex with a theater, an amphitheater, a conference center as far as ability to have dinners, we've got to have a hotel, and we just don't have one. I assume that Martinsburg's designated it as an opportunity zone. I believe it is, and in the area that that is, it's in the low-income area, so it's a high, a high uh, number that, as far as potential. Why not build the conference center where the hotels already are instead of the downtown area? There are a lot of hotels out, actually, um, Boxcroft and, and that area out there. There are a number of hotels. So why not just build the conference center out there instead of having it in town? You want the historical things. You want the museum. You want the music and all this stuff within walking distance of the people that are in the hotel. That's not walking distance. Okay. Now, when you start planning those kinds of things, you have to look at all the other amenities around. And the downtown uh, businesses, uh, I need to, we need to support those, and there's some open slots there. If we get all of this stuff moving in the right direction, everything's going to be thriving. Look at Frederick, the way it rolls. Things can be. All you have to do is look around. Mr. Harvey. Is there some sort of project like that, like a, a conference center? Um, I think Bridgeport has is has a recently went, had that project successfully launched down there. Is that is it a hundred percent public or is it a mix of private public? 
dollars. It's, it's all of the above. Uh, Bridgeport, a lot of the CVB money went in to start that visitor center to help you support. And, and they have an advantage because they're more geographically, like they're centered, more centered in West Virginia. Who would be the draw for a conference center in, in Martinsburg? We are part of the MPO. Uh, we are uh, What's within the MPO? Flat, a, a metropolitan planning organization as oh, far yes. as the city. And we got a draw from everybody from Baltimore, Washington, um, within uh, two-thirds of the population of, of the United States. There's a lot of options, not just Clarksburg. It's an actual Bridgeport-Clarksburg uh, convention center that's there because uh, I've been there. Um, but uh, there's so many things in this area that we could draw from. And I'm going to tell you, with everybody moving west, we're here. Right. right. Elaine, we're down to our final minute or so. A couple things to clarify. Are all of your legal issues resolved? As far as I know. There's, and there's nothing that would prevent you from running for office or serving out a term, correct? No. I, I, I made sure all of that before I put my name in a hat. Absolutely. Okay, so now uh, take the last minute now and please address to the audience. Let them know why they should vote for you for one of these at-large seats. Well, I have been involved with the county uh, and the city of Martinsburg as far as living here all, most of my life and uh, uh, been a, a working with projects, trying to get things going. Uh, as, a, as a member of the council, we help with the tax credits and things for the Martinsburg Mills. We help with the, for the Shenandoah. So all of these things were in our purview. The National Fruit Project, I'm absolutely enthused at. That was a place I hung out as a kid because my grandfather worked there and so did my grandmother. So I'm very ecstatic about it getting cleaned up. In fact, I took somebody on a tour the other day around the property showing, man, you can see it now. All the trash is down, all the weeds and trees, and they're putting up new fence. So... You're not going to find anybody else with more enthusiasm uh, and, or a historical background as far as knowing how things have been. And I also have great dreams and asp aspirations between grants and, and those opportunities and to actually go after funding uh, to, to get some of this stuff in place because, as we say, Martinsburg is a destination, not a location. And right now it's a location, and we're not keeping our public here to spend money here. And with the fact that income is going from 55,000 now to 71,000, population's grown at 100, it's, it's going to continue to be pricing the, poor, the, the poorer folks out of business. And the seniors, it's really going to be hard on them. And I'm going to be looking for opportunities to help them out. Well, thank you. Is there a final word? Final word is I'm also for preservation parks and seniors. Elaine, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Good luck to you in the upcoming election. And at 931, we break.